Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to share some things with you that I was thinking about this morning and then the Holy Spirit led me to do some more research on some scriptures. And this revelation is, I think, so important right now. I know so many people are going through spiritual testing and trials. There's so much coming against the body of Christ and it is so important for us church to really understand uh, where these are coming from, where God is in all of our struggles, what he's doing. And, um, and I think that uh, this is something that needs to be addressed. So I, I wanted to come out and share this with you and I, I hope this will be an encouragement to you. Uh, so the first thing is, again, where is God in our struggles, in our trials? What is he doing? Is he just standing on the sidelines watching us struggle? Uh, you know, and more importantly, are these, are these struggles, are these uh, trials coming from him? All right, so in order to understand this, let's go to the word. Let's go to James chapter 1, verse 13. All right, here James tells us, um, when tempted. Now, the word tempt there is uh, G3985. Uh, and it means, let's see, to test, to scrutinize, to discipline, to prove. All right, so when we're going through a trial, a temptation, James is saying, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. All right, so the first thing to understand here is when we're going through trials and adversities, God is not the source of them. Now, he is allowing them, all right? Yes, he does allow some things to come through. Uh, obviously, he's sovereign. So, yes, if we're being tested, he's allowing it. But there's a reason, and he's not just standing idly by watching. He's in the middle of it, and he is doing something, all right? But the question is, what? All right, so let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Now, this is in the uh, King James Version, and it says, There hath no temptation. Okay, now this comes from G, that word temptation comes from G3986, and it means trial, prove, or test, and that it also can mean uh, enticement to sin, temptation. So this is both temptation as well as testings and trials. Uh, so... Paul says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. Now, this is very interesting. The word escape here is G1545, um, and it means an exit or an end. And it also means it's applied it says figuratively to the way of escape from temptation, referring to uh, the end of one's life, okay? So when it comes to fleshly temptation, it's like there has to be a crucifixion, which lines up with Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. So the way of escape from physical temptation is by dying to the flesh, dying on, with Christ on the cross, being crucified with Christ. Uh, but as far as trials and uh, trials and testings and things like that, um, it's important to understand, as James said, that those are not coming from God. But actually, in the middle of it, now picture this. It says, God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So what does that mean? Well, just imagine God with a strainer, and the enemy has you know, a plan to bring... What does the Bible say the enemy's here for? To kill, steal, and destroy. So he's wanting to bring uh, any number of things upon you, upon your family. And God is standing there with a strainer. And he's saying, uh, no, Carol isn't going to be able to handle that. That's not getting through. No, Joe can't handle that. That's not getting through. Melissa's not going to be able to endure that. That's not getting through. Okay, so we tend to think mainly of what we're going through because we're struggling, we're in pain. But I want you to think in terms of how much God is literally holding back. I mean, out of 100% of what the enemy wants to bring against us, God may be holding back 90% of it. All right? So 
where the enemy wants us to, to think of God as uh, bringing these things on us, which is a lie, um, he definitely doesn't want us realizing how much God is holding back because he knows how much we can handle. And so again, let's go back to why are we being tested? Why are we going through adversity in the first place? All right. A lot of times in the natural, the spiritual, there is a, there's a parallel. And in this case, I believe that um, physical uh, workouts are comparable to a, to spiritual trials. Um, in the same way you would go to the gym and work out with weights, you do it because uh, in the end, you know you'll be stronger. It's not fun and it's not easy, but you know it's going to strengthen your muscles. The same is true, uh, spiritually speaking, why God does allow some of that stuff to come through uh, and come against us because it will make us spiritually stronger. It will bring us on into maturity. All right, so he does allow us to go through some stuff. Um, but it's so important for us to realize that God is on our side. He is for us. He's not against us. And the things he is allowing, he is allowing for a specific purpose, all right, to help us grow, to help us to mature, uh, to teach us to put the, the flesh to death, all right, uh, so that we're no longer enticed into, into sins by our flesh. Uh, so all of these things are a part of a process and in the middle of the process, it's important to remember what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, that God is faithful. He is faithful. This is something the enemy doesn't want you to think about, all right? That when you're struggling, when you're suffering, you can trust him in the process. Uh, he has a plan. He has a plan. And that end will come to that struggle. As I often tell people, all of our circumstances, good or bad, are temporary, all right? So just keep that in mind. Um, but God is faithful to us in the middle of everything we're going through. He is actively holding so much back from us, church. He is actively uh, protecting us from a lot that could harm us or totally destroy us. All right, because he loves us. And it's his will uh, for us to grow and to mature um, and to, you know, just to come into our purpose and destiny in Christ Jesus. You know, he's on our side. I just don't want you to forget that. And I felt like this was something that uh, I think some people are confused about. I hope this clears that up if you ever wondered uh, where the trials and struggles come from. Um, but as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.